This is Cameron Chai from Amazon.com. On behalf of VCAM, coming to you from the Carbon Fibre Future Direction Conference in Geelong, Australia. The conference has been organised by VCAM and Deakin University and sponsored by VCAM, Deakin University and the Victorian State Government. Today we're speaking to Slade Gardner, who's a Lockheed Martin Fellow and keynote speaker at the conference, and I'd like to welcome Slade to the program today. Thank you, Cameron. So, Slade, Lockheed Martin's obviously involved in aerospace. What, what sort of things do you actually do in aerospace? We have two business areas that are concerned with aerospace. One is called aeronautics, where we uh, are prime contractors on several well-known aircraft platforms, such as the F-35, the F-22, and the C-130J. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a space systems company. Uh, I'm currently working for space systems company. And in that division, we build uh, spacecraft, we build satellites, and we build uh, missiles. Right. So you guys are obviously sort of at the cutting edge of technology and materials. Well, what, what have you seen in the, in the last, say, 20 years? What's been the big changes in materials for, for the aeronautical industry? There's been a lot of excitement in the last 20 years, almost a rebirth of material science. A lot of that we can attribute to nanotechnology. Uh, I view nanotechnology as doing material science at an order of magnitude greater precision because we now have tools such as scanning probe microscopes that allow us to use the scientific method at a new order of magnitude precision. We can look at things more closely and we can control matter uh, to a higher degree of precision. So you obviously see that that having research facilities like this, where the one that they recently built, at, or they're in the process of building at the Australian Carbon Fibre Research Facility, with all the with all the electron microscopes and other analytical instruments, as being as being an important factor in the development of these types of materials. Very important. Yes. And what what other sort of materials developments have you seen through Lockheed Martin and your experience there over the last so 10, 10 to fifteen years? There's been a lot of development in synthetic materials, so carbon-based composites, but there's also been a lot of development done in traditional metallic alloys, specifically in manufacturing techniques, in building components and parts out of titanium and aluminum-based alloys. And what about as far as the composite type materials and carbon fiber type materials, are they becoming more widely used in, in aircraft manufacture? They certainly are. Every new generation of aircraft tend to have more composite as a percentage of the uh, total weight of the aircraft. And could you give us some sort of feel for, for how, much, how much sort of carbon fiber materials are being used in, in, in like the F-35 for instance? Yeah, I can give you a feel. I don't know exact numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, the numbers are over 30%, I believe, by weight of the airframe and uh, we would have to act, check with the program people to make sure that we have those numbers exactly correct, but um, the numbers, I believe, are over 30%. And, and, and more recently, what sort, of, what sort of components are now being made out of the carbon fiber type materials as opposed to more traditional to metallic type materials? In our development efforts, we've looked at uh, trading all sorts of structures that were traditionally metallic with composite solutions. We've looked at wings, we've looked at tails, we've looked at inlets. Uh, many of these are very substantial structural features of aircraft. And uh, every aircraft is different as far as what finally makes it onto the airplane, but we've certainly considered all of those kinds of structures. And the ability to use these newer types, all these carbon fiber type materials, does does the, the new processing techniques come into that? Like if, if you've advanced in your, in your processing technology to be able to produce perhaps higher precision, higher, higher strength parts, does, does that help you to integrate more carbon fiber materials into, into the aircraft? It certainly does. Processing is a big factor in the implementation of composite parts. Uh, processing or manufacturing methods allows use of different composites sometimes by driving cost down, sometimes by uh, adding new capability for building new kinds of structures. So cost is still a big, a big consideration with, uh, def in the defense industry? Absolutely. 
cost and affordability are very big considerations. And, and with, with the, the increasing uptake of carbon fiber type materials and the, the increasing consumption, is that, is, is that helping to, to bring the cost of those materials down and their, and their consumption up, I guess? The raw material cost of carbon fiber is a part of the cost of the final composite part. But really, it's the manufacturing costs that build into the final total part cost. Uh, it's labor, it's tooling, it's inspection, it's testing. It's all of these other costs that involve uh, manufacturing steps that ultimately add to the cost of the component. And uh, new product forms of carbon fiber that address those kinds of manufacturing steps that minimize tooling, that minimize labor, that help with inspection, that help with testing, are really going to have the biggest impact on final part cost. And what about automation? Have you guys presumably are uh, automating various steps in your, in your processing f of materials? We automate where we can, yes. Automation is a very helpful resource in uh, improving part quality, reproducibility, and in uh, removing some of the labor out of the manufacturing. All right, and can you comment at all on where you've seen the, I guess, the, the carbon fiber industry in, in the U.S. go, and where that, how that might apply to the Australian carbon fiber industry at all? The carbon fiber industry seems to be going through another period of growth. Uh, the time seems to be right for Australia to enter uh, some segment of the carbon fiber industry with growth and with increased capacity of carbon fiber manufacturers uh, there will also be new market opportunities that are developed so perhaps if, if australian companies were able to develop technologies and expertise in the in the near term that you think that might be a good way for them to be able to get into the industry based on the, the current climate or the current market conditions yes i think it would be i think developing unique capability for manufacturing parts or developing unique uh, product forms that lead to advanced manufacturing capabilities would be a very strong niche market for a new entry into the carbon fiber industry. All right then, Slate, thanks very much for, your, for giving some insight into what you and Lockheed Martin are doing with carbon fiber composites and advanced materials in general. Uh, and we thank you for your time. Thank you.